Now we're in James chapter 4, verse 4. Reading from the King James Bible, quote, Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever, therefore, will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God, unquote. Reading from the English Standard Version, You adulterous people, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Unquote. Reading from the Young's Literal Translation Adulterers and adulteresses, have ye not known that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever then may counsel to be a friend of the world, an enemy of God, he is set. Unquote. All right, let's look at parsing this out. In the Greek, ye adulterers. Let's look at the definition of that phrase. James only uses it one time, and it's here in this verse. This is defined as one who is faithless towards God. Continuing, and adulteresses. Know ye. Now that phrase is used by James one time, but it's also used several times throughout the New Testament. Let's take a look at the very first time it is in the Gospel. Mark chapter 4 verse 13, King James Version, quote, And he said unto them, Know ye not this parable, and how then will ye know all parables? Unquote. Again in Luke 21 31, quote, So likewise ye, when ye see these things come to pass, know ye that the kingdom of God is nigh at hand." Unquote. Again in John 13.12, So after he had washed their feet, and had taken his garments, and was set down again, he said unto them, Know ye what I have done to you. Unquote. The definition of this word in the Greek is to see to perceive with the eyes, to perceive by any of the senses. The Greek word for know ye is ido, and let's parse this out. It was written in the perfect tense, which corresponds to the perfect tense in English, describes an action which is viewed as having been completed in the past once and for all, not needing to be repeated. It's in the active voice, so it represents the subject as the doer, the performer of the action. And it's an indicative mood, simple statement of fact. Know ye. Continuing. Not that the friendship of the world. So let's see. James uses this one phrase of the world, the Greek word for it, one time. Let's see how else it's used in the Greek Bible. Matthew 4, 8, King James Version, quote, Again the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain, and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world, and the glory of them, unquote. Again, Matthew five fourteen. this is Jesus talking, quote, Ye are the light of the world, a city that is set on a hill, cannot be hid, unquote. Again, Matthew thirteen thirty five. Quote, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, saying, I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. Now let's continue. Of the world is, let's parse out the word is, it's in the present tense, so now. Indicative mood, so it's talking about a fact. Continuing, enmity. Let's look at the definition of that. The definition of this is hostility, by implication, a reason for opposition to God. With God. That's kind of curious. You would think that that was used more often, but it's not used often in the Greek New Testament. James uses it once. Let's look at the other times. Matthew 19.26, King James Bible, quote, But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. End quote. Continuing parsing, with God, whosoever, therefore, will be a friend 
Now let's look at the phrase, a friend. The Greek word is used several times in the uh, Greek New Testament. Once by James. And the next time is Matthew eleven nineteen. Reading from the King James Bible, quote, The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Behold a man gluttonous and a wine-bibber, a friend, a publican, and sinners, but wisdom is justified of her children. Let's look at this Greek word that was used for of the world. James uses it one time, but let's take a look. John uses it in one of his epistles. 1 John chapter 4, verse 5, quote, They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. Unquote. Again, he does it in 4.14. Quote, and we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Continuing parsing is. So of the world is. It's written in present tense. So now passive voice represents the subject as being the recipient of the action. Indicative mood. So it's simply stating the fact. Continuing with the enemy. Now the Greek word used for the enemy is used one time by James. Let's take a look. Matthew uses it in Matthew 13.39. Reading from the King James Bible, quote, The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world. And the reapers are the angels. Unquote. It's used only one more time in the New Testament. Luke 10.19, quote, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Unquote. Continuing of God. All right, I think we have a pretty good understanding of what this verse means. Let's take a look at John Gill's commentary in the Bible on this. Quote, Ye adulterers and adulteresses, unquote. Not who were literally such, but in figurative and metaphorical sense, as he is an adulterer that removes his affections from his own wife and sets them upon another woman, and she is an adulteress that loves not her husband, but places her love upon another man. So such men and women are adulterers and adulteresses, who instead of loving God, whom they ought to love with all their heart and soul, sets their affections upon the world and the things of it. The Vulgate Latin, Syriac, and Ethiopic versions leave out the word adulteresses. These the apostle addresses in the following manner. Quote, know we not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God, unquote. That in immoderate love for the good things of the world and a prevailing desire after the evil things of it and a delight in the company and conversation of the men of the world and a conformity to and complacency with the sinful manners and customs of the world are so much declaration of war with God and the acts of hostility upon him and show the enmity of the mind against him it must be highly displeasing to him and resented by him quote, whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God unquote. whoever is in league with the one must be an enemy to the other God and mammon cannot be loved and served by the same persons at the same time. The one will be loved and the other hated. The one will be attended to and the other neglected. This be made known by both reason and from scripture, particularly from Matthew chapter 6 verse 24. Reading from the King James Bible, quote, No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. He cannot serve God in mammon. Unquote. Now that ends John Gill's commentary on James chapter 4, verse 4. Remember, when we're doing our Bible study, we're going to compare other versions with what we're reading to try to get a concept of what we're you know, reading and trying to figure out. We're going to go ahead and parse the Greek, because it's the language this is written in, to see... You know, is there any meanings or definitions to James use this in any other way in any part of his his book that he wrote? 
So we're going to look at that. And we're going to look at how is it used by uh, other writers. Did Jesus say it at all? Did he use it? And we're going to look at John Gill's commentary. Because he's the only one who's written a verse-by-verse -verse commentary through the Bible and is not influenced by our current United States prosperity cult that's going on on television or other things like that. So we're going to take a look at that. And if need be, I'll look at other commentaries and or listen to them like J. Vernon McGee with Through the Bible and see if there's anything that adds meaning to this. So this ends James chapter 4 verse 4. May God richly bless you as you continue to study your Bible. And if you like this, please like and subscribe and tell others.